Kurt Russell is one of the unluckiest actors of the 1980s. Kurt Russell had a reputation as a box office bomber, so whenever he was cast in a film, analysts would immediately forecast its failure. Perhaps the only reason he didn't disappear into direct-to-video obscurity was that many of his failed projects later became genre classics and cult favorites. Everything changed in the early 1990s. No, some of Kurt's films continued to fail, but there were some that made a decent profit. As a result, the actor's fees also began to grow, reaching their peak with the film's breakdown and Soldier. His roles in these two films earned Kurt $15 million and $20 million, respectively. Both projects failed, however, Breakdown probably ended up making a profit from media and TV sales. As for Soldier, the failure was so bad that it ruined Kurt Russell's thriving career. Furthermore, the film's director, Paul W.S. Anderson, had to resort to making trashy TV shows until he got the chance to return to Hollywood with a small film called Resident Evil. Although Soldier hit theaters in 1998, its story began back in 1981 on the set of Blade Runner, where screenwriter David Webb Peoples first came up with the idea for the project. In the 1980s, Peoples' script sparked a lot of interest and even caught the attention of Clint Eastwood. However, Eastwood knew that he was too old to play a soldier, even for a science fiction film, and thus considered the director's position. Eastwood's plans fell through due to funding issues, in 1984, the film was estimated to cost $40 million. At the time, it was a budget comparable to that of a major blockbuster, one that even George Lucas's Star Wars could envy. After Blade Runner failed at the box office, Warner Brothers hesitated to fund another gritty sci-fi movie, and Eastwood had to leave. The next person to show interest in Soldier was Sylvester Stallone. Considering that Sly was already a big star, he probably had the best chance of getting Soldier into production. But when he was promoting the project at the studio with the director of the first Rambo, Ted Kotcheff, Sly, as was often the case with him, went overboard with his demands for the size of his fee. The exact amount he requested remains unknown. Given that Sly was paid 10 to 12 million dollars for his roles at the time, it's likely he expected a similar pay for Soldier. Therefore, the project was put on hold again. Warner resumed work on it in the early 1990s, this time with Keanu Reeves set to play the lead. However, the actor had only two films under his belt at the time, Bill and Ted and Point Break, which had just come out. When the film's estimated budget approached $60 million, the studio panicked and halted production once more. The next time Soldier made headlines was in 1996, when Kurt Russell expressed interest in the project. Russell had recently starred in Warner's Executive Decision, which, despite not being a huge success, was able to recoup its budget. With a famous actor on board, the studio decided to take a risk and invested $60 million in the film. As unfortunate as it is, Kurt Russell played a large role in the film's disastrous box office performance. Because of him, the studio had to postpone filming a whole year. And it wasn't that the actor had a busy schedule. Kurt Russell simply decided to get in shape at the age of 47, which took him a full year. Director Paul Anderson never criticized the actor's decision, especially given that Kurt Russell supported him in all his interviews, blaming the failure of his previous film Event Horizon on solar storms and things like that. However, the director was never satisfied with the way Soldier turned out. According to him, he and screenwriter David Webb Peoples originally planned to make a space western set in vast, open environments. But filming had to be delayed until Russell could bulk up. That's when Paul Anderson directed the disastrous Event Horizon. Perhaps Kurt Russell simply felt guilty about it and thus constantly defended the film. According to the director, when they returned to film Soldier a year later, they discovered that they would not be able to use the locations they had reserved for filming due to the El Nino hurricane. Because of the tight deadlines, they were forced to shoot inside a studio, which greatly reduced the film's scale and negatively affected its entire look. The filmmakers envisioned Soldier as much more than just another science fiction action film. In many of his interviews, the director said that he and the screenwriter planned to make a sequel to Soldier that would bring together Kurt Russell's character with Harrison Ford's character from Blade Runner. To do this, they filled Soldier with a bunch of references to Ridley Scott's sci-fi film. For example, in the wreckage on the junk planet where Kurt Russell's character ends up, 
there can be seen a spinner from Blade Runner. In addition, the service record of Kurt Russell's character, Sergeant Todd, includes the battles of Tannhauser Gate and Shoulder of Orion. Rutger Hauer mentions these battles to Harrison Ford in one of the scenes from Blade Runner. Although it isn't directly mentioned in Soldier, the filmmakers claim that the genetically engineered soldiers who replace Todd and the other obsolete soldiers are in fact replicants. This moment is even referenced in the additional materials for Blade Runner 2049. The Warner Brothers short film 2036 Nexus Dawn, which was released prior to Blade Runner 2049, implies that Nexus 9 replicants were created in 2035. That is the same year when Kurt Russell's squad gets replaced with more advanced fighters and Soldier. Now, it is difficult to imagine Soldier and Blade Runner together. However, if Soldier had been shot in an open space instead of small studio sets, the results could have been very different. Although in that case, Blade Runner 2049 wouldn't exist at all. Anyway, Paul Anderson's film received harsh criticism after test screenings. Viewers claimed that the film looked fake and dated. To save the situation, the studio cut Soldier by 30 minutes and released the resulting one and a half hour film in theaters. It's important to keep in mind that the movie wasn't complete when it was screened for test audiences. And because Soldier made extensive use of green screen, the audience got the impression that the entire film was shot in just three rooms. It's not just Soldier, but all movies that use a lot of green screen face this problem. Unfortunately, there's currently nothing that can be done about it. In short, had the movie been filmed in an open space as was originally intended, the audience might have perceived it differently. Although people are usually warned before test screenings to ignore some nuances, it is obvious that their impressions from raw and finished material will be different. Soldier premiered in US theaters in October 1998 debuting in fifth place on its opening weekend. In total, the movie earned a pitiful $14 million at the American box office. To avoid losing even more money, the studio chose not to release the film worldwide. Instead, it was released directly to video in most countries. As a result, Soldier's total box office earnings were less than Kurt Russell's salary for his role. After such a devastating failure, Kurt Russell took a three-year break from filming. He came back in 2001 with 3,000 miles to Graceland. The movie also failed, and Russell lost his superstar status. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and stay tuned.